Next on All Access. Focus, play hard, hit the ball. Taste perfection, each and every play. Threw it out of taste, man. Four man rush, push up the middle, oh. this is hit. And Wilson goes down in the end zone. It's in! How do we feel about coming down here to New York and getting that first double of the season? Oh! oh! I think the running game really helped the, uh, you know, helped the play action passes and, you know, the linebackers just kind of get frozen there and, you know, Farrow's got to step on them and the corners, you know, just late falling down. On. October 2007, New England's final visit to Texas Stadium. Back to throw, fire is open, caught, touchdown, Wes Welker! Tom Brady right on the button with that one. In one win, build momentum. Yeah. It- How can it build your confidence? It can spark some life into the uh, room. The Patriots break into the win column for their first W of the season. Hello and welcome to Patriots All Access presented by Geico. I'm Steve Burton. Sure, it was short on style points, but a win's a win. And for the 15th straight time, the Patriots defeated the Jets. Can they parlay that victory into some momentum as they travel to Dallas to take on the Cowboys late Sunday afternoon? The Cowboys present a whole different set of challenges, and we will break those down. But before we preview Dallas, let's look back at the sights and sounds from New England's first win of the 2023 season. The Jets backed into a third and 15. The quarterback taking the snap. Four-man rush. Push up the middle. Oh. Since hit. Judon is there for the sack and the safety. The flyest. Thank you so much, Zeke. Thank you. Jets absorb a loss of six. Three receivers right for Wilson. A blitzer coming. Wilson stands in, moves up. Now he's pressured. And he spins. Oh, somebody and falls touched him. On his own. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's it, D. Good series. Jones with the play fake. And a throw down the right seam. It's caught by Farrell Brown. Racing to the 20. 15 10. Chased by Amy. Get in. Five. Stretching out to the pylon. A dive for a touchdown. Farrell Brown, the tight end on the right wing. Stevenson, the setback with a play fake, deep drop by Jones. Checks it down to Farrell Brown at the 40 with a stiff arm. Gets outside of the 45, and then he's undercut by Gardner and brought down from behind by C.J. Mosley. Kick is up, sailing to the uprights, and Ryland's kick is good. The quarterback. Taking the snap. Four man rush. Push up the middle. Oh. Wilson's hit. And Wilson goes down in the end zone. It's in. That's it. Yes, it. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, sir
Wilson is back. Stands in, throws it near side. Oh well short God. of the first down marker. Well oh short of the 50-yard line. He's tackled is the tight end Conklin by Kyle Duggar. You hear the term every mark, survive and advance. The Patriots survive today 15-10. And that. now with a 1-2 and two record, they advance into week four with a 15th consecutive victory over the New York Jets. Congrats. Thank you. That was a nice catch. Good job. Let's go, baby. Got it done. <laughs> 60 minutes, y'all. Good win, man. Mm. Uh, all right, fellas. Look, this is the NFL, man. This is the NFL. Every week. Couple plays, close games, you know, come down to the wire, situational football. That's what it is, all right? Formula today, no turnovers. Yes, sir. No turnovers. All right, great job defensively. Great job in the kicking game on the field position. Wasn't a great day, okay? In terms of the weather and ball handling and all that, tackling. You got to put everything you got into it. You don't know what the situation's going to be. Safety at the end of the game, four minute offense, all right? You know, Hail Mary, I mean, that's, you don't know. It's going to come down to those plays. Nice job. All right, Slate. It's all yours. Yeah. 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 We do have some new members of the congregation. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 Help them out. Uh -huh. How, it done? how do we feel about coming down here to New York and getting good. that first dub of the season? Uh -huh. oh! Welcome to our Bob's Discount Furniture Studios with Mike Reese and Paul Perillo. And both you guys said the Jets game was going to be a tractor pull, and it was a tractor pull, 15 to 10, but they'll take it, yeah, correct? They had to have it. I, I really think, you know, there was a lot of talk going in, oh, and three, it's still not insurmountable. I just think that uh, from a mental perspective, Mike, they had to find a way to get a win. You're on the road in the division, no style points for any wins, really, but especially in those kinds of conditions. Had to have the win. That's the bottom line. Matthew Slater apparently addressed the players about that. Said, we can't fall into 0-3 hole. Mm -hmm. Mentioned some statistics of, hey, you go 0-3, probably not in the playoffs. I look at it this way. They had to do three things. Check three boxes to move forward, right? Number one, no turnovers. Yep. They, they did it. Yep. Number two, no slow starts. Okay. They did it. And number three, better offensive line play, run game balance. They did it. So positive. Okay, but Mikey, Mikey, Mikey. <laughs> <laughs> what is Should happening? Should it have been that what close? What is happening right now? 15 to 10. <laughs> Should it have been that close? The Jets. I, I think yes, because I think that the biggest difference between the two teams is, is pretty obvious. It's Mac Jones and Zach Wilson. So, uh, you know, I don't know how long the Jets are going to go with, with, with this. That's obviously not going to work. We're going on two plus years now. Um, but that's the difference in the game. I think. You absolutely expect it to be that close, Mike, the way that those two teams stack up. The Jets have really solid personnel everywhere else, Steve. This is not one of these games where mm -hmm. the Patriots play down to the competition. The Jets are really good. They just lack the most important position. And I think it, it probably shouldn't have been that close the way the game played out mm -hmm. in this sense. I believe the Patriots had four chances, Paul, in the fourth quarter. To really drive the stake in the heart of the Jets, it came just down get to a, a first Hail down, Mary. you know. And I think to me, that's the next box mm -hmm. they need to check, you know. Now that they've fixed the other ones I mentioned, I, I, I'm going to look at it the other way. I'm going to say the Jets had the ball four times with a chance to win the game. What is happening the, right now? In the Patriots defense. <laughs> Didn't allow that it's to happen. Reversal. You know, you know, I just, I, I think the strength, it, the strength of both teams is obviously on the defensive side of the ball, and the Patriots found a way to win a game with their defense. Half full, half. Empty. Oh, I, I, I won't say no, 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 no. I can't no, believe this. No, because you're like pretty it. positive. All right, so with that being said, this win, yeah. take the win. What does it do for momentum going forward, and can they use this as a spark? Yeah, I, I think that they have to, Steve. It's not going to get much easier. I know there's a lot of teams that are coming up, you know, after the Dallas game that, you know, are kind of similar, you know, to that game. I think they're going to have some coin flip games. But if you start off, if you don't have anything tangible to show the team mm -hmm. on that left-hand side, Mike, you yeah. got the one in the column now. Now you build on. You, you watch Cincinnati Monday night. Um, didn't play great. Joe Burrow after the game was 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 almost overexcited yeah. just about the fact that they're in the win column. Takes a lot of pressure. And off. I think winning this type of game is important when it's a low margin for error type yep. game where every play, every punt, every field goal, every right. defensive snap could 
change the outcome, I think that does give them momentum. All right, don't go far because we're going to be talking about the Dallas Cowboys heading to the Big T coming up very shortly. All right. We'll be back with more Patriots All Access right after this. Coming up on All Access. Coach Belichick breaks down some of the best plays from the win over the Jets. I think the running game really helped the, uh, you know, helped the play action passes and, you know, linebackers just kind of get frozen there and, you know, Farrow's got to step on them and the corners, you know, just late falling in on. And later, a conversation with Matt Judon. Who's the best dress? <sighs> on a team? On a team. On a team? Uh... You're watching Patriots All Access. Patriots All Access is brought to you by Bank of America, the official bank of the New England Patriots. And by Ace Ticket, where New England fans go for tickets to all their favorite events. Visit aceticket.com. And by AdCare. Be recovery strong. Speak up and reach out. Ask for help. Call AdCare at 800-ALCOHOL. Welcome back to Patriots All Access. Time now for the plays of the week. And, Coach, a lot of good plays against the Jets. Start with the uh, Farrell Brown touchdown. Yeah, good place to start. Uh, well, this is a play-action pass that, uh, uh, you know, came off some of our runs here. And, and so Farrow uh, comes down the seam. Hunter goes outside. And, and uh, you know, Gardner kind of widens with uh, Hunter. And then Farrow, you know, is able to, to run through and, and split the two-zone defenders here. Max sees it right away, makes a great throw, puts it right in stride. And, you know, just a foot race now to the goal line between uh, Amos and, and uh, Farrow here. So um, I think the running game really helped the, uh, you know, helped the play action passes sure. and, you know, the linebackers just kind of get frozen there. And, you know, Farrow's got to step on them and the corners, you know, just late falling in on it. That's important, too, to hit plays when you have big personnel. You talk about personnel groupings where teams think, oh, they're going to run the ball. But here you hit them on a big, big pass play. Yeah, I mean, that was a hu obviously a huge play in the game for us and, you know, gave us a, uh, you know, again, not soften them up a little bit against the run because, yeah. you know, we'd, we'd thrown out of it. Plow from in front. All right. Defense. Well, you know, Duggar's down over here. Uh, clearly, this is a, a check, check situation for uh, for Wilson. Uh, and, and the disguise here works out well. And he ends up, uh, you know, calling a, the stretch play to the, to the top there, to the weak side. And, uh, you know, there's a blitz off the edge. Jennings comes in there, makes a play. Really, really good to have Jennings out there. He did a good job in the running game. Set a good edge for us, you know, gave us some quality plays. Yeah, really built off that too. You talk about setting that edge, building that wall, extending things to the sideline. You guys did a lot of that throughout the course of this game. You know, I thought another good, you know, run defense play, a lot better than we played it the week before against Miami, where we kind of, you know, have a good wall here, here built on the line of scrimmage with, you know, Wise, LG. Uh, this is Jelani Tavai coming up in there, Barmore on the nose, and then, you know, Kyle playing behind the line. You know, Hall's kind of looking around. There isn't too much there. It comes Judon off the backside. He bounces it out, and you know, Kyle's right there for a for a TFL and set up another long yardage situation. So, um, getting the Jets off track on some of these uh, early down calls and, and into long yardage, second and long, third and long, really, really helped us. Yeah, good leverage with uh, Wise there too on Beckton. You know, off the edge here, yeah. Build it. All right, and uh, it's nice when you can get home with four here, right? Yeah, this is a good uh, you know end of the game pass for a situation here. You can really. You know, see Judon over here on Becton, uh, you know, starts to take him up the field and then gets past the quarterback and then rolls back in there on, on uh, Becton and makes play. The good push in the middle by, uh, by Barmore and, and Wise keep Wilson from being able to, to step up away from that edge rush. And, uh, and then when, you know, when Juice spins back inside, he just bear hugs him and it's all over. I remember a lot of defensive fans, Nikovich, all of them said, Coach would always say, worst place you could be is past the quarterback. That's right. We don't want to be back there. That's right. standing back there with these guys just like, watching the game. <laughs> I like that spin move, man. Nice underneath move right there. Jeez. And then, uh, you know, this is a really a, you know, kind of an interesting play here at the end of the game. Fourth and ten. And um, this is uh, uh, Peppers here, uh, you know, down in the box, you know, on the tight end. And then he, he comes out and actually, you know, takes Wilson. Uh, and you can see that uh, Zach Wilson back here is definitely looking to, to throw the ball uh, outside to that out cut, and, and there's uh, Pep right underneath it here. So, you know, he's got to reload it. By that time, the pass rush is getting there, and, and now, uh, you know, Kyle's got a big open field tackle to make there, and, you know, he, he gets him down fourth and long. So, uh, really big stop. But a, a really good good play here by, uh, by Peppers, and, you know, Wilson just, you know, wanted to try to bang that out cut for the first down, and, you know, he took it away. 
All right, great stuff right there. Like he doesn't make that tackle, he's off and running. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's all. Solid. Right. A lot of fun after wins, Coach. Thanks for joining us for Plays of the Week. All right, you got it. Thanks, though. Did the win over the Jets provide New England with some confidence as they head down to the Big D? Dan Roach checks in on the Patriots. The Patriots survived today 15-10, and now with a 1-2 and record, they advance into Week 4. It wasn't an artistic beauty by any means, but it was exactly what the Patriots needed, their first win of the season. Look, it always feels good to get a win. Um, you know, you can't, um, I wouldn't say it's relaxed or anything. Yes, no time to relax, especially when your head coach made this declaration moments after the game ended. We just got to convert and, you know, get to get more points than we got. You know, 15 is not going to, you know, generally you're going to need more than that. Yes, progress has been made, but lots of work remains. Obviously, we checked off uh, having a game with no turnovers and, it led to a win, so that always helps, but definitely uh, trying to be more explosive and, and generate some more explosive plays, um, but also, you know, score more points. Definitely want to score more points, and I mean, the best way to do it is think about your job and your assignment. Try not to look at the scoreboard, and really, when you have, when you execute well, you score. When you don't, you don't. So <laughs> it's kind of a simple um, equation. It's just we got to do it better. Next up, the 2-1 and one Cowboys in Dallas, a team that can explode on offense with Dak and company and features the 2021 Defensive Player of the Year in Micah Parsons. He's definitely the top player in the league, really. He's the best player we've gone against so far. Sunday will be special for Ezekiel Elliott, as the three-time Pro Bowler and two-time NFL rushing champ spent the first seven years of his NFL career with the Cowboys. You know, it's cool going back to Dallas. You know, I, I spent a lot of time there. It's a lot of great times there, but I mean, out there you got to keep the main thing the main thing, and that's, uh, you know, going out there, getting better as a team, and going out there and get another win. Sunday could also be a special day for Bill Belichick down in Dallas. With a win, he would become just the third coach in NFL history to notch 300 career regular season victories. Legends Don Shula and George Hallis also in that group. For Patriots All Access, I'm Dan Roach. Congratulations to Dwayne Siggs Berry of Billerica High School, who is our Coach of the Week. The Indians are fresh off a huge road win at Central Catholic. Presenting the award is Pro Football Hall of Fame linebacker Andre Tippett. There's a man to this day I still love, and he's my high school coach. And if it wasn't for him, I don't think Andre Tippett would be standing here talking to you guys today. The Patriots Charitable Foundation will donate $1,000 to the Bill Ricca High School football program in the name of head coach Dwayne Sigsbury. Welcome back to Patriots All Access. Time to sit down and talk with Coach Belichick. And Coach, good to get out of there with a win, right? Divisional opponent, and that's 15 in a row against those guys, especially down there. Yeah, always good to win division games on the road. Good to win any game, but, uh, yeah, it's great to, great to beat them. Tough weather weekend all weekend. Sort of going into that game, I'm sure, you know, you're trying to game plan for that. And as the game plays out, how much does the way the game is trending affect strategy, whether it's third and one, field goals, punting, defense, the way you play defense, goal line, all that? How does that play out as the game goes? Yeah, I think it has a little bit of a factor. I think it's more in the kicking game than offensively and defensively, and unless it gets bad. You know, if it starts opening up, then that's a whole different story. But, you know, a little mist, a little rain. Um, you know, I think these guys are pretty good with that. But um, it does affect the specialists, and, you know, there's a small margin of error, especially on, you know, long field goals or uh, like ball handling on the punts, things like that. That degree create difficulty is a little bit harder. Going down to Dallas this week, obviously, and from a preparation standpoint, Jets Dallas from that sequential order. How much does that help you? You know, we don't have to stop and reset. We got we can do some good prep work here in the next two weeks. Yeah, well, you know the the uh, Cowboys certainly have a big background in the West Coast or in the uh, Green Bay offense, and um, you know with Coach Hackett at, at uh, the Jets coming off of Green Bay, 
in the background that he had there with Aaron Rodgers. There's some similarities there offensively. You know, defensively, both teams are, you know, one gap, penetrating, you know, disruptive type defenses. So, um, you know, there is some carryover. I'd say some of the players yeah. Dallas have are be hard to replicate on any team. Guys like Parsons and, and uh, C.D. Lamb and uh, Prescott and uh, you go right down the line, Pollard That's a big guy, too, for a quarterback. Yeah, so Lays. they – they have some pretty special and unique players that uh, you know will be very hard to get ready for. But schematically, uh, be it some things we've seen before. Micah Parsons, a lot of people call it blasphemy to call compare him to Lawrence Taylor. How good is this kid when you watch him on tape? He can do everything, right? Yeah, he's a pretty versatile player. Um, you know, it'd be hard for me to put anybody ahead of Taylor, yeah. but um, sure. but Parsons can drop into coverage. Not that they do it much, but he can if they need to. He plays all across the front, plays inside, plays outside, can rush off the edge. Has a lot of power, uh, can play at the point, can pursue well. Um, he's long, he's disruptive, he's pretty instinctive too. So uh, he's got a lot going for him. He's a big guy, he's a tough guy to handle. You said when you judge teams, you could tell the success of a team based on how many times did he get down in that red zone on offense. Dallas has been down there a lot. They've struggled a little bit lately, but they find a way to get down there, don't they? They can move the ball now. They've got some explosive players and, and make a lot of explosive plays. Um, you know, their offensive line, when it's healthy, is is pretty good. Uh, you know, they're a little banged up last week. We'll see what we get, but they're uh, you know they're pretty pretty experienced group. They're well coached. They don't make many mistakes. You you got to go out there and beat them. They're not gonna um, you know do things to just you know hand you the game. You're gonna have to go out there and play well. All right, time now for the Ace Ticket Twitter question of the week, and it comes from at Maya Het. We played down in Dallas uh, when that stadium was first built, Jerry World, and they got the big video board. How difficult is it sometimes to look at review when everything's above you? as opposed to having the jumbotrons we're used to looking in the end zones where everything's now above you. Yeah, it's definitely a little bit different. And, um, you know, you kind of take your eyes off the field to, to look up there. And sometimes you miss something that that's going on that you, you need to pay attention to. So you kind of have to find that that balance there. But uh, they're big. They're very bright. They're, you know, borderline distracting. But um, but the quality is amazing. Then you got that Oculus down in um uh, takes eight seconds to close, right? We know yeah. that from the Super Bowl. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Uh, Bell Schrader later in the show. Both both sides of the ball we can take a look at. They got a lot of guys on defense. CD Lamb on offense. You mentioned him. Yeah, Pollard, Dak, oh. Dak. The big three. All right. Big three on offense. Sounds good. If you want to ask the coach a question, you have to follow the team on Twitter at Patriots, hashtag it, ask BB. We'll be back with more Patriots All Access right after this. Coming up on All Access, we take a look back at one of the most hyped regular season games in recent memory. <laughs> And later, Coach Belichick spotlights a potential game wrecker on the Bellistrator. You see Prescott just has great patience here. He holds the ball, uh, gets hit, but lets it go just at the last split second and puts it out there you know, right on the money for Lamb. You're watching Patriots All Access. Patriots All Access is brought to you by Putnam Investments. Putnam Investments and the New England Patriots, proud partners committed to an active game plan on the field and off. By Gillette Labs with Exfoliating Bar, Gillette's ultimate shaving experience. And by Dan O'Brien Auto. Come in to any Dan O'Brien Auto Group store today and get your awesome protection plan. Keeping it awesome. Social Media Minute, I'm Tamara Brown. You'll never guess what was trending on social media this week. Bill Belichick weighed in on the dating rumors of Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift. I don't want to spoil it for you by quoting it myself. Why not hear from the greatest coach of all time himself? Where do you fall on that? <laughs> Travis Kelsey, Taylor Swift, power couple in the NFL. Travis Kelsey's had a lot of big catches in his career. <laughs> this would be the biggest. <laughs> Never did I think I would see NFL insiders like Ian Rappaport breaking news on Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey, but I'm here for it, especially when it involves Bill Belichick. Also on Victory Monday, the players took to social media to celebrate beating the Jets for the 15th consecutive time. Linebackers Jawan Bentley and Anthony Jennings were among those who took to Instagram. That's it for this week's Social Media Minute. See you next week. Welcome back to Patriots All Access, everyone. Joining me now is Patriots defensive end Matthew Judon. Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you as well, yeah. Let me ask you this. Can one win build momentum? 
Yeah. It How can, can it build your confidence? It can spark some life into the uh, room. You do all that training off season, all that work, and uh, it's it's just to get a one win, mm-hmm. and that, and that's just the start of it. That's just the start of it. And usually, and hopefully, it come on week one. But it, it uh, came on week three against uh, a division opponent against us, and. Uh, I think it could build some momentum because we've been playing everybody close. Uh-huh. And we've been playing and everybody you know that. close, yeah. And now it's just good to get a win under our belt. How well is the defense playing? We playing, we playing pretty good. We playing pretty good. We uh, we seen uh, uh, Miami team mm-hmm. that can put up basketball numbers on offense. <laughs> I like uh, that. I like and that. And then we also seen the Eagles team that can put up the same. Uh, the Eagles team can run. They can pass the ball. And we and we held both of those teams. We held both of those teams, and we just tip for that with them. Uh, and, we, and we know that on defense. And that's what we got to do every week, though. So it's not like we playing mm-hmm. out of our mind or we playing, uh, we playing that we can't c- c- sustain this right. uh, uh, level of play. Mm-hmm. We just playing to our standard. I like that. You're a pass rusher. You have a lot of tricks in your arsenal. How would you describe yourself as a pass rusher? Do you do it out of power? Out of speed, combination of both. I think it's a combination of both, but I think uh, I think I just go where you're not. Like if you're protecting the edge, you can't protect the inside. You're protecting the uh, inside move, you can't protect the edge. And uh, so, a lot of times my wins don't result into sacks. It's like okay, I just know how to beat this guy now. Mm-hmm. And so uh, with that, it's just a it's a game within a game. It's a one on one matchup. And uh, you kind of try to turn it into basketball. You become, you know, whoever your favorite point guard is, whoever you think the lo- most elusive is. And I think, like, Kyrie Irving always just finds, like, o- open lanes. Like, okay, if you going to stop to pull up, then I can get to the rim. And that's, that's kind of how I go about wow. pass rushing. I got to show you something. I got to put this up here. That style right there. You see it? Yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. That, that, that style. Tell me about that outfit. Now, that's the outfit you wore before the Jets game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you got to have a lot of swagger and a lot of confidence to walk in. I like the best, though. So. Oh, appreciate uh, t- it. Tell me about what, what, what's your message here. What, uh, that's just my style. That's just, I just wear I just wear a lot of different things, and you know, right there. We, that is sweet. Right? We, it was New York Fashion Week two weeks before we went out there, so... You know, I didn't get to go and I didn't get to partake, but uh, that's just, you know, that's just a little, you know. You gotta have a lot of confidence to walk in something like that, bare chested. Well, you know, I got I got confidence and I got tattoos, so you know, showing off the <laughs> tattoos. Is fashion a way of expressing yourself? I think fashion is a way of showing your individuality. Hmm. Uh, what do you mean by that? You know, I, we all wear the same kind of outfit during the game. Mm-hmm. We all we all do the same thing. We all play. Uh, we all kind of physical players and stuff. And then just what you wear before the game or leading up to it uh, is is your is how confident you are in yourself. Uh, what do you want to? What kind of message you want to say? About yourself or before the game, and you. This is this is your, you know, let's say runway. This is your runway to speak without saying anything. You know, you you really. This really the only time you get to show it off. You can't pick yourself. Okay. Who's the best dress? <sighs> best dress. Uh, on the team. On the team. On the team. Uh, you know. Well, it's different styles, I think. I think you got to, like, Gotcha Gotcha and Trent had, like, like big men's fashion style. Uh, but then you can go, uh, you can go, like, KB uh, to, like, Zeke for, like, the little guys or, like, streetwear. Right. Uh, Jawan Bentley got a lot of streetwear fashion uh, and shoe game. Shoe game. Uh, yeah, shoe so game. it's it's a uh, you the know shoe game. you know it's a it's a lot of people uh, who's not who's not the best dress. We know Baltimore is the worst dress though. We <laughs> we came to a we came conclusion? yeah we uh, as a team we came to a conclusion. Baltimore the worst. <laughs> Good stuff, my man. Thank you, thank you, Pat. Good luck on Sunday. Thank you so Dallas much. In Dallas against the Cowboys. Matthew Judon, our guest, will be back with more Patriots All Access right after this.
it was one of the most highly anticipated regular season matchups in recent history. October 2007, for New England's final visit to Texas Stadium. The 5-0 Patriots visiting the 5-0 Cowboys. The Patriots struck early with touchdowns to both Randy Moss and Wes Welker. Back to throw, fire is open, caught, touchdown Wes Welker! Tom Brady right on the button with that one, 35 yards! Defensively, they pressured Tony Romo. Red snap to Romo, back to throw, the rush, he sacked! Back inside Rodney the 10-yard line, Rodney Harrison! And they put the game away in the fourth quarter. And off to no one. Play action fake. Tom Brady shoots it down the middle. It is caught at the 40, 35, 30. He's going to go all the way. Touchdown to Dante Stallworth. They left Texas a perfect 6-0. Woo! We're going to appreciate this victory and let it be. <laughs> Who wants some of that popcorn? Oh, got that popcorn, huh? Woo! How we feel about serving up some fresh, hot, humble popcorn? Oh! This player profile is brought to you by Pepsi. Very appreciative for the time, you know, I spent in Dallas. I'm very thankful for you know, Mr. Jones and the Jones family, you know, drafting me and giving me an opportunity. It's just another week for me. Uh, I want to go out there and play Patriot football. We want to go out there. We want to get better. We want to get a win. It's just the next stop on our on our 17 game journey. So. Welcome back to Patriots All Access. Time now for the Bellistrators. We look at the Dallas Cowboys. Big 425 matchup this week. Coach, starts on defense with him. This guy's been here for a couple of years now, this Lawrence kid. Yeah, well, they got Lawrence on one side and they got uh, Parsons on the other side. So it's a, uh, you know, first play of the game here against the Jets. You can see how, how uh, aggressive they are. You know, Lawrence really, you know, sets kind of the tone of the day here by, you know, tackle for a loss, you know, second and long, you know, really uh, dumps Hall here. Um, and if you run, you know, run away from, then you got to run away from Parsons. Uh, you know, this is a Tampa game last year. First play of the game, same thing. Uh, here's you know, Parsons up here on the on the weak side, and uh, you know the Bucks run the run the counter play down here to the bottom, and and Parsons comes off the backside and makes the play. So or chip him a little bit. <laughs> yeah, these these two guys are really uh, you know really a problem on the edge of the defense. It, it, Running at him's hard, running away from him's hard. They're good pursuit players, and, and blocking them in the pass rush is hard. So uh, they got two good bookends there, and you know, they're, they're tough to handle. Yeah, I mean, you know what those negative plays, too, to start games? You know, on the road, that place in Dallas, we've been down there, that place gets amped up when they get rolling. Yeah, that sure does. You don't want to do that. Um, you know, offensively, really, it's the big three. It's it's uh, Prescott, it's Lamb, and it's Pollard. Uh, those guys, you know, just do a lot of damage. So uh, here's the third and five play. And, um, you know, Prescott sees the man-to-man -man coverage here. You can see the, the three Giants you know, defenders locked up. Uh, this is Lamb here in the number three spot. And you know, it makes a quick little move there at the line of scrimmage. And there he goes. Great confusion. Will yeah. route, all that. Yeah, Ooh. and then, you know, tackling. And now that's when the fun starts. You know, trying to get this guy on the ground. He's very explosive, fast, quick. Uh, excellent route runner. Very good hands. And Great tough. hands. Great hands. I know we'll take another look at him um, you know, throwing that hand up here at some point. Um, actually, think it's this play right here, right? There's the right. hand up, right hand. Yeah, same thing. Uh, you know, press coverage here. It's, you know, one on one up there. And you can see Prescott just has great patience here. He holds the ball, uh, gets hit, but lets it go just at the last split second and puts it out there, you know, right on the money for <laughs> Lamb. So, you know. Defending him in the, you know, catch and run plays, deep plays, intermediate throws. He's really good at all of them. Obviously, Prescott's, you know, one of the top quarterbacks in the league. And he can throw under pressure. Certainly, I don't want to give him a lot of time back there, but he, he can put it on the money. But guy's hanging all over him, too. Yeah, a lot of confidence. I'm sure that guy wants the ball, too. It, it finished it here with Pollard out yep. of the backfield. Right. And so here's Pollard, and, you know, they're in the I formation here. And, you know, follows the... Uh, 
the guard here coming around and you know, good off tackle play and now he's into the secondary and there he goes. So, you know, like to run behind the uh, number one draft choice from last year. That is very athletic, you know, also played tackle, played tackle and played tackle last year, but movement in the guard here and um, again, good, good run here by Pollard, breaks the tackle, good balance, stiff arm. And there we go. This Lamb out, out in front block, and Lamb can do it all. That's pretty good for him, too. Lanky, lanky kid. Yeah. Not the biggest kid, but uh, you don't have to be the Fast, biggest kid to block well. Strong. Yeah. So, yeah, really explosive offensive team. And uh, and defensively, they, they, they're they very disruptive up front. Should be fun down there in Jerry World. Coach, good luck. All right. Uh, start Thank stacking you. them wins together. Thank you. All right, there you go. There's your Bell Strader. More Patriots All Access will return right after this. Patriots All Access is brought to you by Bank of America the official bank of the New England Patriots. And by Putnam Investments. Putnam Investments and the Patriots. Proud partners committed to an active game plan on the field and off. Welcome back, everyone, to Patriots All Access. Back in our Bob's Just Conferences studios, back with my guys. Mike Reese and Paul Perillo. Bill Belichick said earlier, 15 points is not going to be enough. Yeah. going forward, yeah. okay, does this team have the capability to score more than that down the stretch here, especially against the Dallas Cowboys? Yeah, well, first I would say I would agree strongly with Bill Belichick. I don't think generally that's enough points to win games, but I do think there are – they've had opportunities. I thought the first week especially, uh, I thought they left a lot of points on the field. Um, you know, obviously the Jets play a, a tough game defensively. The conditions were, were pretty bad. They have to be capable of, of more than this, Steve. You can't just have three scoring drives every week, Mike, and expect that to be enough. Mm -hmm. I do think that the passing game can get a little bit more efficient, especially uh, moving the ball down the field a little bit. There's, there's, there's room to grow. They are capable of scoring more than 15 points. I feel strongly about that, and I would point out that two of those points came from the defense. Right. So Why do um, you feel there's a butt coming? But, well, no, this is what I want to say. I think being inside Sunday against the Cowboys is going to show us that. Like... First game against the Eagles, not, not the easiest conditions. Sunday against the Jets, I mean, to me, that was more about ball security than, uh -huh. you know, offensive uh, explosion, if you will. So I want to I wanna see it in on this sort of neutral conditions, if you will, and I think that the answer to the question is going to show up. They will have more than 15 in this game. All right, are the Patriots in a good position going forward facing against the Dallas Cowboys because are they better off facing Dallas coming off a win or coming off a loss? Yeah, I mean, generally, I, I kind of like the group think um, about, you know, the really good team that slips up against the bad team. Now they're refocused and it's tougher to beat them. But I think Dallas, Mike, yeah. there's some questions about their maturity, always, yeah. to me. that They're always a team that's considered one of the dark horse Super Bowl favorites, and then they, they fail to live up to expectations. Are you so, saying they're weak-minded? I think they're a little weak-minded at, at times, yes. I think Mike McCarthy yeah. sometimes gets a little tight. You know, when, mm -hmm. when things get a little bit difficult. So I don't think this is a terrible spot for the Patriots. It's really interesting. I never thought of that, and I think that's a great point that you make, Paul, because my first thought was Dallas is rolling. Everyone's talking about them at 2-0 and as the team in the NFC. You know, this is their year. And then they go to Arizona, which right. might be the worst team in the league, and, and maybe that's a little harsh, and lose. To me, I don't see how they don't come back and are sort of sharpen their pencils, if you will, and put forth a much cleaner, better performance against Can the Patriots. Give me another small one that works in the Patriots' favor. Go ahead. Yeah. Dallas plays San Francisco in week five. Ooh. Looking ahead. They'll be looking ahead, Ooh. too. There you go. Ooh. Because, again, he's, he's good. They're not the sharpest team mentally. He's well, good. Like he's that. good. I like he's that good. little something, something. All right, prediction time. I think it's a tough spot. Now, as much as I think that it's mentally uh, about Dallas, I, I, I do feel like that there's a big difference here in weight class. Yeah. Um, I, I think Dallas is much more balanced than the Jets. I think they have equally tough defenses. You say more than 15 points. I'm going to predict more than 15 points, but not many more. I, I like Dallas 27-17. So you're going with the mentally weak team. <laughs> I'm just saying. Sometimes talent wins out. Sometimes <laughs> talent wins out, okay. Steve. I'm back in the win column after last week, right? Really? After I picked yes. the Patriots. So one and two. I'm going with the Cowboys this week. I do. I'm with Paul. I think it's a tough spot, but I think they play a good game, and I think we'll see them score over over the the 15 points. I'm going to say Cowboys 24-20 in a very entertaining game. All right, guys. Thank you very much. All right, Steve. Well said, well put. I disagree with both of you. <laughs> That'll do it for this week's edition of Patriots All Access. From Mike Reese and Paul Perillo, I'm Steve Burton. Have a great week, everybody.